What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Well, we're here today to talk about Keyshawn Vaughn. The draft has happened, the dust has settled, and I'm not sure there's been a bigger uh, mover from the running back position uh, than Keyshawn Vaughn. And for on DLF, which is Dynasty League Football, if you're not familiar, his already they've done a quick turnaround on some ADP, and he's gone from 19 to 10, which, you know, 10, I'm, I'm not necessarily like saying, oh, don't definitely don't draft him there. I mean, I'd probably wait even a little bit longer. Um, but I've also seen plenty of people on Twitter saying he should be the second or third running back off your board. And I'm not here to trash Keyshawn Vaughn by any means, but I think I, think I want to definitely talk about that because I think that's ridiculous. Absolutely. If you, uh, if you want to take Vaughn over Higgins and Mims and Ayuk and Pittman and those guys, I probably wouldn't do that, but I can't really be mad at you if you want to do that. But if you're going to come out right. and say he's like the second best running back that you should take him over Swift and Akers and stuff, it's like, what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, man, I, I, I agree with you. Like I, I probably want him. At, if you want to swing on him at the back half, back part of that first round, I'm fine with that. And, and definitely into the top of the second, I get it. We're pre, we always preach running backs here and he's kind of the next one after the top five, um, which, you know, in my opinion, if you're in a one quarterback league, probably should be the top five picks regardless as out of those big five. And we have, we'll have other videos and have other videos talking about, uh, those guys and, and what's going on. Um, yeah, and, and and like you said, not trying to trash Vaughn. Like we think Vaughn is a pretty decent player. Like he's got good balance and he doesn't dance and he's got some acceleration and the speed, four, five, forty, and he can make people miss. So I mean, caught twenty yeah. balls, which isn't the worst, but it's not like it's yeah. a crazy number that everybody's well, pointing him with. Yeah, he he he's definitely a, a a decent player on on tape, and I think he runs hard. He's he's tough to bring down. Uh Typically, the first guy doesn't usually get him, which, you know, you like to see. And he's playing, started at Illinois and, and came to uh, the SEC uh, and played on Vanderbilt, had a great 2018 and, and 19. I think they lost some O-linemen and some pieces and weren't quite as good. He's definitely, in my opinion, kind of a one cut sort of runner. That's how he should be attacking. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that he can't be good, but it seems like people are dra aren't drafting him for the long-term dynasty value. They're drafting him because he walked into this, you know, great situation that everybody was interested in. And we think it's going to be great, but we don't actually even really know that we're just projecting uh, you know, it could be not as great as everybody thinks it. it could be awesome, but it could be not as great as everybody thinks it is. Yeah, Tommy could be more of the recent Tommy than the older Tommy, and and he might not be there next year. Like, who knows? And might equate to wins, but maybe not as much fantasy production as we're talking about, or or it could be awesome, you know? Right, but to just assume, we're just trying to heed a little caution here. Like, if you want to take him, that's fine, but don't get over overly excited and have your expectations through the roof because there's a lot of things not working in his favor that I feel like people aren't really pointing out at all. Right. Well, real quick, before we get into a couple of those, um, they did, they drafted Tristan Worf in the first round, which good for them. Uh -huh. um, they have a couple of decent pieces along the offensive line, um, but they definitely needed help in that area. And then Rock another, crushes. what's Rock, that? Gronk crushes blocking. Uh, yeah. That was the second point is that uh, everyone talked about Gronk coming back and all oh, fantasy, this a fantasy that while he may be decent for your fantasy team, what what you what he's great for is the boost to that offensive line and the boost to the running game because he was always the best pass run blocking or blocking tight end in the game which nobody ever gave him credit for because well people up in New England knew but like he was just devastating people uh, whoever he, whoever his guy was so that's huge for the running backs there which I don't think people are talking about um, so and then and then the other big thing is. There is definitely a real chance that there is no off-season program here, making it even more difficult for rookies to get up to speed and comfortable in their new offense, which would make me think that Vaughn's role might be hampered a little bit into the season here. And I'm not, again, I'm not sure people are buying Vaughn for the long-term outlook. I, you know, I certainly didn't hear people singing his praises before the draft, um, but now that he walked into a potential fantasy trove uh, or fantasy 
potential fantasy treasure trove, uh, if you will. People have, you know, shot their loads and shot them up the boards. And, you know, for maybe a two-year run with Tommy, which, again, we're not even sure if it's going to be great or if it's not going to be great. I think it's going to be pretty good, and it could be really good. But, you know, you might need to temper expectations. But and I, and I can't understand it to a point, but I mean, there's I don't think you're putting enough on that. Well, we'll, we'll have another video talking about running backs in 2020, really any rookie in 2020 here and talk a little bit more in depth about it. But like it could be a real possibility where you don't have a big offseason program and you're already a rookie coming in. So and, you know, you have Bruce Arians there who can you can get in his doghouse and he doesn't necessarily trust rookie skill position players right away. He doesn't give them just like, here, I drafted you. Here's the reins. Right. You look at David Johnson back in 2015, like he was clearly the best running back that they had on that team. And they still didn't just hand him everything. Like they had a 30 year old Chris Johnson who they fed well over 200 carries to when David Johnson was busting off long, mad runs. Like he was clearly the best player and Bruce Arian still made him wait a year before completely handing over everything to him. Right. And he was having to do it, like you said, having to do it on long runs before he even could get a look on the field. And then they, they did end up giving him some some OK work. And I'm not saying that Vaughn won't have a role right away. Like, I think he will have a little bit of a role, but you might temper expectations for, you know, a guy who, you know, they don't pass block a lot. They're not asked to pass block a ton in college. And that's something that you can work on in practice. And, and by, you know, it seems like he's OK, like Vaughn is OK at pass protection, but I wouldn't say he's awesome at it. There's kind of mixed reviews out there on that. What do you think? Like I, what I could see, I thought he did a good job sometimes and some bad times sometimes where you can get a good handle on that is camp. Um, right. And that's something that no, they I, may not have. I completely agree. I mean, there's definitely mixed reviews when you read things like, a lot of the people that are saying he's coming in, they're anointing him as a good pass blocker. Then you read a PFF stat that says he gave up 17 pressures in 229 pass blocking snaps, which they said isn't a very good number. Uh, Trying to watch the tape, because that's what we do here at the FF Dynasty is we watch the tape. It's hard to get a read on it. There's not a lot of pass blocking attempts that you get to see in the tape that's available for the the tape that's available to us at least especially with the all 22s like i I appreciate all the work that people are doing out there with the all 22s but if y'all could hook me up with a couple pass blocking snaps that'd be great (laughs) yeah attempts if you could hit me with some with some pass protection that'd be awesome uh but still appreciate all the work you're doing but i agree with what you said the, the snaps you can see him pass blocking on. Sometimes he's doing a good job and picking up blitzes and whatnot. And other times his quarterback's getting hit. So, I mean, every single rookie is going to struggle coming into the pros with pass protection. And like you said, you get those reps in camp and that's, what's going to help you out. And you might not get those and it's easy to get in the doghouse. Rojo was for, we'll talk about Rojo here in a second, but I mean, he easily got in Bruce Arians doghouse last year for missing on a blitz. You don't think Vaughn can't do that same thing, get in that doghouse, right. you know? Right. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, Vaughn had a ridiculous 18, and then, you know, 19 wasn't on the same level. He was almost averaging almost eight yards a carry in in 2018, Uh, and then 19 wasn't quite on the same level. And, you know, there's a quote going around that J.J. Zacharyson posted from Bruce Arians at the Combine talking about, you know, what he wanted to see from his running backs. And, you know, he had Christian Okoye, who was only a two down guy and never played on third down. And then he had guys like Edron James and Marshall Falk, who you never had to take off the field. So, you know, you want a back who can catch the ball and play in all three downs. Like, yeah, no shit, Bruce. We all want Marshall Falk and Edron James. But like, that doesn't always happen. That, that Those are those are really special guys. Um, so, and Vaughn, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, he's going to get in there and catch passes. Like, he, okay, he caught 28 passes at Vanderbilt last year. Decent, decent job. But it's not like he's some crazy route running uh, technician, technician like the Clyde Edwards or something along those lines. The years before that, he caught 13, 9, and 16 balls, you know, throughout his college career. You right. know, he had one nice season where he caught over 20 balls. So, I'm not saying that he's not a great pass catcher. I think he's a decent pass catcher, um, but I don't think he's like super duper proficient at like this ridiculous route runner and pass catcher out of the backfield. That's just going to walk in there and just blow everyone's mind running routes out of the backfield like James White. Like I just don't. It's super annoying to hear people like talk about how good he is at all these things. Not not that he's not good. I'm just saying like they'll use these same arguments against other people. They'll say like, oh, he did. He only had one year where he had more than 20 catches. They'll say that negatively about other players. And then they'll also right. mock people for having a bad year of production, you know, and they're just like 
they're just pa- they're just they're just they're just passing it off, you know. Oh, it doesn't well, yeah big deal when it's the guy you want. And it's like I don't even know that they really like Vaughn because nobody was on him before the draft, and now they're all over him. And it's feel, I feel like it's more hate against Rojo than it is that they actually think Vaughn is a good player. Right, and that's again. Long term, Vaughn could be turn out to be better than Rojo, and maybe Rojo is just a rotation rotational guy. But from what you saw with in one year with Bruce Arians, yeah, he got in the doghouse a little bit. But Rojo went from one player to a completely different player. Like he showed great improvement. He went from one point nine yards to like four point two, and he was averaging ten yards a catch. Yep, and he, I think he caught uh, how many? How many catches did he have? He cat caught thirty one out of forty targets. Right, which, you know, isn't anything crazy, but they were splitting the backfield all up and, and all that jazz last year. So to me, and Rojo, I went back and watched Rojo just to make sure I wasn't tripping, and I thought that he looked f- fantastic last year. Like, he was he was showing sh- strength. He was, nobody could bring him down. His his quickness was off the charts. He was juking people, cutting people up. The start stop was fantastic and he, like i said he was finishing strong on a lot of runs there wasn't any bullshit Power, arm baby. tackles bringing him down i'm drinking water but <laughs> no, so, yeah, i mean right, man he's electric and he plays with power and he was showing good progression he 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 definitely took a huge step forward in year two and he dodged, you know, they didn't take a top five running back. They didn't take Clyde right. Edwards Hilaire. They didn't take Jonathan Taylor. They didn't take, he dodged a day one and a day two bullet. And then boys took Vaughn in the, in the middle of the top of the third round. And it's not, they took another running back too. So it's not like they said, Oh, we got Vaughn. We're good to go. Like no big right. deal. Well, they then, took another you know, guy. Like, and so yeah, they got, they're using Bruce Arian comments on the guys he did oh well you know we see Vaughn could be an every down player like and we we the other guy we drafted could be you know a smaller version of a joystick like David Johnson like yeah no those are the guys you just drafted so no shit you're gonna come out you're not gonna be like ah we drafted this guy because he was you know the sixth best guy available and you know we missed on the other guys because we needed an offensive lineman and you know you're gonna right 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 and again I like Vaughn. I don't think he's a bad player at all. I'm just trying to safeguard from from getting too caught up and drafting him too high because of the situation that he walked into. And I really want to hit hard on that. This is a different season than we've seen ever and may ever see again. Like it's there's probably going to be some shortened things going on. Obviously, injuries can happen and it could be all on Vaughn here in a minute. I would assume they're going to bring somebody else in even in this backfield to have more depth. Um, but the fact that you might not get a chance to pass pro and learn all these things. And Rojo's already been in the system for a year could really give Rojo the upper hand here for, you know, even half the season. And if you're, you know, you could lose half of any production of Vaughn and then get some decent Vaughn on the second half of the season. And then who knows what the second season of Tommy's going to bring you if they'll, if he'll even be around and, and, Maybe at that time, Rojo's grabbed the reins and, and is, has solidified himself, or maybe Vaughn comes in and gives you a nice year, year two with Tommy. But then maybe you're starting all over. Maybe Bruce and Tommy ride out and after they're done, and now you're, it's a whole new regime in there. I don't really know. Bruce has kind of talked about it a little bit of saying that he might ride out. Uh, so, yeah, I would think Tommy, who knows? Done. I would think once Tommy's done, Bruce is probably going to ride out too. But whatever, that's that's some speculation. And, and But it is worth thinking about. And then another thing is like, I'm not, I don't know how much this matters to us, but it matters to a lot of people. Like Vaughn's old. I mean, he's like 23 years old. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. And like, get this, Rojo is three months younger than Vaughn is. And he's got two years in the NFL and one year under Bruce Arians already. No one's talking about right. that at all. And no one's talking about the way that they have talked up Rojo in this offseason. Like, they're on record saying that they feel very comfortable with where Rojo is right now. And then after the draft, Bruce Arians on Sirius XM or whatever radio interview talking about how he's excited to see Vaughn push 27 he's excited that he'll be a nice compliment to rojo like right. talking up rojo as if he has the reins in this offense so i just right. not trying to trash Vaughn. just want people to see that, that that there is a good player in rojo and, and if you so- hate rojo there's no you're not talking to anybody out of it right he sucks and they after already- that first year there's no way he could be good because he was like the youngest running back and one of the youngest running backs ever drafted he was like 20, 20 years old. old right yeah jinx so, so- I agree. Uh, again, if you don't like Rojo, this isn't going to convince you. You're going to take Vaughn and think he's the he's the best. And again, I think Vaughn's a hey. fine player. And, and for long term, like you know, Vaughn could end up being awesome. But it's just this is a weird season, and I feel like you're going to get, you know, the veterans are going to have a lot better chance of 
holding on to things than, than rookies did coming in and really blowing the doors off of um, – the beginning of the season because it's just it's a it's a tough game out there and when you're not having an off season to prepare uh, no rookie mini camps OTAs none of that shit so and then on top of that Tommy's in a new place too like yeah you know all that it could be a little slow goings absolutely good points I think we ran long on this video but that was a good discussion if you guys if you do hate Rojo hit us with some comments about it maybe avoid that thumbs down button and if you did enjoy the video hit us with a thumbs up we greatly appreciate it and uh leave us a comment regardless make sure you subscribe appreciate everybody for uh tuning in you got anything else case are we good to go oh man i, I don't really i think i'm good, good man Let's Let's, go, uh... <laughs> all right peace